Hey guys, so I recently just downloaded the um, Chrome debugger for Visual Studio Code that lets you debug React code in uh, Visual Studio. And I want to just kind of walk you guys through how I did that and how you can debug your first program. Now, they say you can only do this with Create React App, so I'm not sure if this works for other starter kits. It might as well, but I know for sure this works with Create React App. So the first thing that I did is I clicked this little box here to install um, a plugin and the plugin that I installed or extension is up here, debugger for Chrome. I have no idea if this works for Firefox as well. This is specific to Chrome. Um, you can search it over here and it'll come up and you just download this one with 3 million downloads. Um, and then once you have that, you can pull up the React application that you want. Um, and I'm just going to npm start to start the server as usual. So I just hit control and the tilde sign to bring up terminal. And then I'm going to go ahead and say npm start for my project. And this will go ahead and open my browser. And um, I'm going to go ahead and run this on a different port because I have another React application running right now. But uh, I'm going to go ahead, it'll go ahead and start up on localhost 3001 and we can close terminal and we can just use the application regularly if we wanted but what we want to do here is debug so once we have the server started up like this um, we can start debugging and to do that you click on this little bug icon with uh, Visual Studio Code and for whatever reason you need to actually close this but make sure your server is still running but just close the window at least that's what I had to do and I clicked on this little cog and I clicked Chrome and what it created is this little launch.json file um, in this launch.json file I want to just say the um, port that my localhost is running on so you guys saw mine was on 3001 so I'll set that and just save it and go ahead and click this little run button and you'll notice how this turns orange down here and now we see it launch again and now we're deb debugging we're actually in debug mode and you'll notice how I have these little options up here. This is how you debug. So for this, we're going to debug the login page. So the first thing I want to do is catch it every time I make a change. So my on change function here is called every time I type. So to set a breakpoint, you just come over here to the side right next to the number. A little red dot pops up. I click on that. So every time I type, what's going to happen is it's actually going to freeze the window over here. And I can click this if I want to resume. But you notice I'm now debugging this. And if I open up that bug window I have earlier, I can see right here the local variables. So I can see my E variable right here. And I can go into the props if I wanted to. Could see my globals, which you know there's a bunch of React stuff. We don't have to we don't have to worry about that. But you can see your local variables and you can kind of see the flow of your function. So if I wanted to, I could step through this. So this little guy right here, we step over and we can just go through that function. And I can just go ahead and push the green arrow to continue and have it run. Um, we got an exception, I'm not sure what this exception is about. I'm just going to go ahead and click run. And if I don't want to get all these exceptions, you notice how down here it tells you when to automatically break. So we have this on uncaught exceptions. I can get rid of that and hit play. And it'll go ahead. I don't see all these random exceptions that pop up. And if I click on this debug console, I can actually see. The console here so if I inspect console you'll notice how these will match up so I have this weird lazy require of web store I actually don't know what this is I've never seen this error before I wonder if it's just um, because I'm debugging that that's popping up but it's a call I can type another letter and actually I just broke the debugger look at that we're done debugging so I think that was actually related to the debugger. I've never had that happen to me before. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close it, reopen it, and see if it'll work. And I'm gonna go ahead and click this again. This is a good one. Uncaught exceptions is a good thing to break on so you can see when your code is breaking. Usually it's not your code causing the error, but let's go ahead and go to login. And let's see if we cause the same error again. So again, I have this breakpoint set here. And instead of stepping through this, I'm just gonna go ahead and push play. And you'll notice we don't get that error again. It'll stop me every time I type. I can run it. 
I'm not sure what was going on there. I think that was a Visual Studio Code bug or something. Um, but what I can do is while I'm debugging here, I can actually take this off. And now I just do it regularly. So you can toggle the breakpoints on and off if you want. And if you want, you can also get this here. You can go into or out of functions. Um, we don't really want to go into the set state function, but I don't know if I have any functions that can really help us here. But for whatever reason, if we want to see the internals of set state, I can click on that and you'll notice how I'm actually in the internals of this function. And if I wanted to get out of here, I can push this, come back out. And if I want to restart everything, I click that guy, restart. You'll notice I reload the page over here, everything restarts. And I can click on this little stop button if I want. So I'm doing the on change function here. Let's try to submit and actually walk through what it looks like to walk through a function. So I'm gonna go ahead and click a little stop guy on this response. So I'm gonna go ahead and type my email and my password and click login. And this actually never gets called, what the heck. I'm gonna go ahead and put my breakpoint here. Um, click login, there we go. I don't know why this didn't get called. I don't know if it got caught or what. Actually, yeah, it did. Um, so the reason why this breakpoint did, so if you noticed, I was able to log in. We got this invalid login here. The reason for that is I set a breakpoint here, but since this is what's causing throwing the air, we didn't get it. So let's step through this. Um, I don't know why I just went to the bundle. I just stepped over this function. That's very odd. So you can see it's a little buggy. All right, let's step out of this. Step out, step out. I'm going to all these random functions even though I'm saying step out. I'm just gonna go ahead and restart that. So as you can see, this is, the debugger is a little buggy and I'm not sure if I actually enjoy doing this more than just putting like print statements but now and then it is pretty helpful this is definitely the most buggy I've seen this thing before um, it doesn't I've never had this many problems with it before let's go ahead see if we can step through this guy at least so step over man same thing happens with this bundle thing let's go ahead and restart it I think it's because it doesn't like um, the try catch. We can try putting the catch, putting our breakpoint in the catch itself. So log in, go ahead and step, and that seems to work okay. We can hit run to finish the function. But that is how you debug your code. You can go ahead and put your breakpoints here. You can say what breakpoints you want to get caught on. So notice how it knows I have a breakpoint here. I can get rid of this breakpoint if I want, and it talk. You saw it toggle on and off. So I want to set a breakpoint on change. Um, you notice how we just paused here, but if I want, if we replay this again, I can just turn that off, right? With this check mark, and now I can type fine. So this is how you can control toggling the breakpoints on and off, or you can come over here and press them. And you can get the uncaught if you want. And the only settings over here is in the launch.json, which you create. And this is a nice little menu you can hover around you just click this to pop that. So that is the debugger for React. Personally, I'm not in love with it. I think I actually prefer just doing console log statements whenever debugging. But I think when you have like an algorithm or something that uh, in particular, sometimes can be nice to step through with the debugger because you can see all the, the values and stuff of it. But a lot of time your code looks like this where you're just loading async um, but if you have a more complex set state or something, it can be nice to step through it with the debugger. So do give this a try. Um, but as you can see, you might just like doing console log statements better because it's a little buggy as you saw. And it's not necessarily buggy, but we're going into files that aren't that helpful. Um, that's probably the correct way, but it's not super um, helping us find a bug or whatever. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.